어, 한국 외대 아프리카구의 황규 득입니다. 아, 이번 그 지중해 어, 연구소 그 국제학술 대회에 어, 초대해 주셔서 어, 감사드리고요. 특별히 그 윤영수 원장님하고 임기래 교수님 비롯한 또 수고해 주신 여러 스텝 우리 선생님들께 다 어, 이 자리를 빌어서 감사의 말씀을 드립니다. 어, 국제학술대라고 해서 이제 영어로 논문을 써야 되는 줄 알고 써서 썼거든요. 그래서 어, 오늘 준비한 대로 영어 논문을 좀 음, 발표를 어, 하도록 하겠습니다. 어, 앞전에 두 교수님께서 그 접근하셨던 접근 방식하고 조금 제 논문은 좀 조금 차이가 있는 게두 분께서 역사학적 또 이제 문화 인류학적 이런 접근 부분들이 좀 아주 음, 아주 위치하게 아주 잘 이루어진 것 같습니다. 제 논문은 어, 그런 어, 어, 접근보다는 이제 국제 어, 관계 차원에서 어, 또 단론 부분이 어떻게 아, 크리티컬하게 비평될 수 있는지 이제 그런 부분들을 집중적으로 어, 논의하려고 아, 논문에 좀 수소하게 내용들을 좀 적어봤습니다. 그래서 아, 일단 그 논문을 다 갖고 계신지 모르겠습니다. 그래서 논문을 좀 보시고 아, 제가 좀 설명을 드리겠습니다. 그래서 아, So in my paper, I try to uh, critique the main uh, reason why the West has uh, strived to promote the project of uh, liberal peace building uh, after the downfall of uh, Gaddafi. Uh, in order to deliver my presentation, uh, focusing on the limits and challenges of the uh, you know, aforementioned the main issues of the liberal peace building project in the post conflict state reconstruction of libyan society i uh, try to uh, provide very short and brief uh, historical uh, background of civil war in libya so to cut the long historical count of uh, libyan uh, civil society uh, as well as state um, i can start by saying that Italy uh, colonized Libya until its defeat in World War II. Uh, and Italy you know, lost power uh, over its colonies and Libya came under the control of Britain and France. Uh, so so uh, uh, as we know, there are three important regions of Libya, that is Uh, Tripoli, uh, Tripolitania and uh, Sretnaika and Fezzan. So these two, Tripoli, uh, Tripolitania and Sretnaika, uh, occupied by Britain and Fezzan was controlled by uh, France until Libya gained independence in 1951. Following the independence, Libya started off as a federal monarchy consisting of those three uh, demarcated regions. Uh, however, when Gaddafi came to power uh, in 1969 through coup d'etat, he abolished the federal system and united the country by centralizing political institutions and became an absolute dictator of Libya for 42 years. Uh, prior to Gaddafi's uh, rule, the King Idris of Libyan monarchy, which ruled from 1951 and 1969, has continued to leave the Libyan society divided into three historical provinces, as I already mentioned, Tripolitania, Cyrenaica, and Fezzan, based on tribal lines. In fact, Uh, Libyan society, which was structured along ethnic and tribal lines, consists of diverse ethnic groups. The major ethnic groups in Libya uh, uh, include Arabs and Amazigh, uh, so-called uh, Berbers, and Tuareg, 
uh, so-called nomads and Togos who are African descent. And Gaddafi pursued uh, actually a very strong policy of tribalism also and supported tribal uh, structures uh, instead of allowing political parties or organizations to flourish. Uh, and also yet, uh, Gaddafi tried to manipulate these uh, tribal leaders in his uh, government and practice a strategy of divide and rule. Uh, through this, he selectively marginalized some clans and tribes, uh, while privileging other clans and tribes such as Wafala, Gaddafi, and Magaria. The main reason for this strategy adopted uh, was that if the tribes united, they could become a threat to depose Gaddafi owing to the power they gathered. To prevent this, Gaddafi uh, strived to divide the tribes and create conflict between them so they could not unite against him. Uh, by implication, uh, Gaddafi's rule for 42 years fractured Libyan society along the lines of tribal, geographical, and social classes in which he managed to manipulate royalty of these tribal rivalries. The Arabization, the Arabization of Libyan society under Gaddafi led to the marginalization of several non-Arab ethnic groups. Uh, this primarily affected the Tobu Black African ethnic groups located in the southern region of Fezzan, uh, previously controlled by France. In the eastern province of Srenaika, including its capital of Benghazi, uh, tribalism and regional federalism have played a significant role in the 2011 uprising. 황 교수님, 황 교수님, 예. 잠깐만요. 그 카메라가 지금 얼굴이 잘려서 나오니까 카메라를 좀 조정해 주시겠어요? 황 교수님 이제 어. 얼굴 다 나오도록. 예, 예, 고맙습니다. 예. 아, 예. 예, 예, 계속해 주십시오. 예. 예. Although the Western province of, uh, you know, Western province of uh, Tripolitania remained largely uh, pro Gaddafi and was the beneficiary of Libyan state policy owing many to its large population of Arab ethnicity. The Amazigh Berber community, comprising just 10% of the total 6.5 million population of Libya, uh, has suffered a persistent oppression under the Gaddafi regime. Uh, so as one scholar uh, noted, thus it can be seen that the fragmented nature of the post-Gaddafi political order is in line with the historical tribal division in colonial Libya uh, that was actually uh, worsened during Gaddafi's rule and by his policymaking full of abusive power and clientelism. Uh, these antagonized heterogeneous groups in Libya and led to the uh, rebellion and to a struggle for power in the current state of civil war. Moving on to the next section titled the 2011 popular uprising supported by NATO and protracted civil war in Libya. Uh, we can uh, start uh, looking at this uh, uh, part by saying that the popular uprising in Libya can be understood as part of the Arab Spring. This started in Tunisia and spread to Egypt and other parts of Middle East. Uh, in responding to Libyan crisis, the UN Security Council, UNSC, reacted swiftly with imposing sanctions on Gaddafi's regime. Uh, and the National Transitional Council, NTC, which is a coalition body of anti-Gaddafi forces formed on February 27th in Benghazi to consolidate uh, resistance efforts nationwide. 
Uh, however, unlike uh, uprising in neighboring states of Tunisia and Egypt, the conflict, uh, the, uh, the uprising in Libya actually followed the logic of civil war from a very initial stage. Uh, following the first election since 1964 held in uh, Libya uh, in August 2012, uh, the unelected National Transitional Council, NTC, transferred power to the newly elected uh, GNC, uh, General National Council. However, the election did not generate a stable and strong government. In particular, the new government's failure to guide the smooth political transition led to the formation of the Libyan National Army, LNA, uh, driven by General Khalifa Haftar. Actually, uh, he used to be a former officer in Gaddafi's military uh, who defected uh, during Libya's ill fatty war in Chad uh, since the 1980s. Uh, this uh, General Haftar challenged the Islamist and launched uh, Operation Libyan Dignity in the city of Benghazi on May 16, 2014. Under the growing political pressure, the General National Congress, the GNC, ultimately held new election on June 25th, uh, 2014. Uh, however, a worsening political crisis followed the subsequent Islamist Misrata blocks laws to the Libyan Dignity Alliances of Liberals and Feathers uh, driven by General Haftar. Uh, Haftar offensive caused the Islamist Misrata bloc to launch a military campaign of its own name, Libyan Dawn. The GNC, which was controlled by Islamist Misrata bloc on the Libyan Dawn forces, rejected election results and refusing to transfer power to the newly elected House of Representatives, HOR. This led to uh, uh, the creation of two opposing government between the Oper Operation Dignity and Operation Libyan Dawn. Uh, in this context, uh, UN support mission in Libya, UNSMIR, has conducted intensive negotiation in Libya. Uh, seeking to favor peace talks between HOR and GNC until achieving the Libyan political agreement, LPA. Uh, uh, another uh, this agreement called Shikrat Agreement, uh, uh, which was uh, you know, adopted in Morocco in 2015. Uh, so under the circumstances, uh, the, I'd like to move on to the following uh, next section, which deals with uh, the, uh, the limits and challenges of liberal uh, peace building in Libya, with focusing on the two primary issues of uh, transitional democracy and uh, transitional justice. So regarding the Libya's failure of transitional democracy, I would uh, like to point out that although the uh, 2012 democratic election in uh, Libya uh, were very much admired by the West uh, with showing the commitment of NTC, uh, National Transitional Council, and their Western allies to establish a democratic government based on liberal peace. Uh, actually, uh, there was a great risk in fueling conflict in the country after uh, the elections held in Libya in 2012, uh, because there was no uh, uh, the problem, the two contending rivalry between uh, GNA and HOR uh, result. Uh, 
It's in fact, uh, since the West was uh, unable to interfere easily in the domestic affairs of Gaddafi's regimes uh, because of the regime's uh, critical stance against the West before. So they had to devise a system uh, that helped them easily gain access to the country's resources. Uh, that is uh, sort of like a theory, theoretical system of liberal peace. And this has helped uh, uh, the construct the project of liberal peace building. Uh, so here it is important to note for us that the liberal democracy is imported from uh, you know, exogenous sources in you know, external uh, powers, such as like Western countries. This may remain very much harmful uh, for importers unless the local groups desire truly its creation. Um, moreover, the Western style of democratization uh, involves a top-down approach of supporting institutions at the central level and among government elites. Uh, this practice is well unveiled in the process of creating the government of national core, GNA, and presidential council in 2015. Uh, given that there is no legitimate uh, government recognized uh, by both internal and external societies, uh, which not only create the absence of rule of law, uh, but also halts the progress of democracy in Libya. So as Jobir and uh, Rojas uh, argued that it was too hasty uh, for the pro-democratic members of the NTC, you know, National Transitional Council, which was a coalition of anti-Gaddafi regime, and their liberal allies to install a liberal uh, democracy and peace without generating an enabling environment for democratic state, which is a precondition for liberal peace. Uh, moreover, uh, uh, it's important to point out that the West failed to take into uh, serious uh, consideration the tribal nature of the state that Gaddafi cultivated for almost half a century and in which he regarding himself as tribal chief in the Jamairiya, which is operated uh, within the tribal uh, framework. And moving on to the uh, next uh, subsection, uh, in dealing with the problem of uh, Libya's transitional justice, I point out that the country is left to resolve uh, both the Gaddafi regime's legacy of human rights violations and war crimes uh, committed in the post Gaddafi era. Although the definition of transitional justice is very much contested, you know, uh, but the concept of uh, transitional justice uh, may be simply defined as the array of processes designed to address past human rights violations following periods of political turmoil, state repression, or armed conflict. Uh, recently, the international development community, such as the World Bank and UN, has begun to recognize that the experience of transitional justice is a affect governance and development processes in the short-term peace processes and longer-term state building and development processes. Uh, in particular, uh, United Nations Support Mission in Libya, UNSMIL, recognized the urgency of transitional justice for Libya, and it made transitional justice a key priority for the new mission. Uh, although UNSMIL, uh, you know, the argued that the transition to building a new Libya requires contending with the past and promoting reconciliation based on uh, principles of uh, transitional justice. Uh, yet, 
this transitional uh, justice was not easily resolved because uh, the, 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 the Wunsmir's uh, the perception was flawed. And according to Wunsmir's report, uh, they did not make a, any single reference to Islamic political thought or traditions, and instead uh, provided a catalog of past crimes followed by a diagnosis in the form of proposed transitional justice mechanisms and truth-seeking processes. And also the Unsmir's engagement in offering an uh, international uh, practice framework for locally initiated transitional justice uh, legislation became very much controversial because uh, transitional justice uh, was primarily about acknowledgement of martyrs and the discrediting, discrediting and disempowerment of former regime officials rather than a tool for uh, good governance and rule of law promotion. Uh, in other words, uh, there was a broader consensus that accounting for the past was to ex exclusively target the former Gaddafi regime. Hmm. And although the scope and breadth of uh, this targeting was contested, actually, you know, indeed, one of the most uh, serious division in post Gaddafi Libya is between uh, revolutionary towns and tribes portrayed as Thuar, uh, which is called, you know, actually uh, regarded as revolutionaries. Uh, including the towns of Misrata, Jentan, Benghazi, Sok Al Juma, Zawiya, Zawara, and uh, on other towns and uh, the tribes uh, called Aslam, uh, which is regarded as regime, uh, Qadhafi regime's cronies. You know, uh, these include um, uh, parts of Warfala and Bani Wali and Kathafa uh, uh, and Mashara and Western Rahani. Uh, this split was actually exacerbated by Gaddafi's manipulation of the tribe as a Libyan social institution uh, that he used uh, both to maintain uh, his 43 year rule and to try to defeat the 2011 revolution. Uh, however, as Gaddafi's killing has uh, shown, uh, the groups that waged war against Gaddafi under the revolutionary banner were also uh, implicated in numerous alleged criminal acts of an international character, such as crime against humanity and war crimes. So in this context, uh, ultimately, uh, Libyans opted uh, for the most extreme option in the form of political isolation law. Uh, uh, this was adopted by Libya's parliament, uh, General uh, National Congress, GNC, on May 5th, uh, 2013. Uh, this law, uh, PIL, political isolation law, allowed all Gaddafi era officials banned from participating in the political process, except those who defect, you know. However, uh, due to the serious problems of this law, um, the Libyan parliament of GNC in Benghazi repealed the PIL law on February 2nd, 2015. Uh, therefore, the mechanisms of transitional justice uh, supported by the development community, such as the World Bank and UN, uh, I argue that uh, these uh, should be uh, seriously considered, given that the sidelining of Gaddafi era supporters and officials can also play the negative role of spoilers in destroying peace and reconciliation process as these officials are also extremely influential in certain tribal circles. Uh, in wrapping up my presentation, I'd like to argue that, uh, you know, dismissing the crucial fact, uh, regime change uh, driven by the Western powers would 
aggravate the situation with prolonging the conflict in Libya. Uh, the West failed to help Libyans to establish their own government that could fit Libyan reality, rather than one based on Western liberal values. This means a uh, uh, limitation of the liberal peace uh, is very much deeply entrenched in the project of liberal peace building in the post Gaddafi Libya. Uh, in this regard, uh, it is important to emphasize that peace building should be driven by a local rather than international stakeholders if emancipation is to occur in a way that is resonant. Furthermore, in order to bring peace and reconciliation in Libya, uh, it should not bypass the value of tribal nature of Libyan society to be reconsidered. Uh, summing up, uh, it is important to remember that uh, there is no one set of measures and approaches that must be followed to achieve the effectiveness of sustainable peace building. Rather, inclusive uh, participation of diverse local stakeholders in national dialogue uh, should be at the center of the process of reconstructing the post Gaddafi uh, Libyan society. Um, however, uh, a liberal peace building approach based on liberal uh, peace theory, uh, which is usually very much reactive than proactive, tends to suppress conflict rather than transform the conflict and the civil strife. Okay, this is what I uh, have prepared for presentation. So I'd like to let you uh, open up the flow discussion. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. 감사합니다.